Yeah, what we've got now for this evening is winter campaign. So including the launch of the NHS 111, the first, and the flu vaccination program. So can I introduce Jim? Jim Britt, our Head of Urgent Care for Cheshire CCG. Over to you, Jim. Hi, good evening and thank you, Andy. Thank you, Sinead. Very interesting, that. Um, interesting, intriguing. I'm not a doctor, incidentally, so it's always interesting to me. Um, um, my role um, as Head of Urgent Care also extends um, across Cheshire, Warrington and Wirral, because I'm also dealing with the ambulance service with um, 111, which we'll talk about shortly, um, uh, patient transport, which is provided by West Midlands Ambulance Service here, um, just to main, uh, name two or three of the hats. But um, let's just talk winter to start with. Um, we just already referred to it. It's unprecedented in most people's uh, memories this winter. For a number of reasons obviously covid is affecting everything we do we've already talked about that and referenced it um the other interesting thing is because we're all trying to get back to normal in terms of gp practice and certainly in secondary care they're all on catch up um normally in winter you see uh, um uh, uh, the um uh, change in terms of less elective um, work um, in favour of non-elective. In other words, planned care takes not a back seat, but is 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 often cancelled, particularly in January. Um, this year, we're not being we're not doing that because it's so important. And this goes back to the the the, the point that both Jeanette and Andy said in terms of we want people to come forward um, with problem, whatever it is. Don't let COVID put you off. And we are also playing catch up with those people. That's particularly important with cancer. Um, the, the, the really big issue with winter, as it always is, is workforce and trying to make sure that we have enough workforce um, right through the system to make sure that we have enough clinicians in place, enough services to, to actually deal with the, the, the level of demand that we get. And uh, I think um, uh, the other big mantra, as again, you'll be hearing this a lot, is um trying to encourage people to go down the self-care route. So what have you got in your bathroom cabinet? We've done that tonight. If, if, if the next poll of call, it would go and see your pharmacist. Your pharmacist really important. They're very skilled and they can deal with a lot of uh, minor ailments and they'll offer you um, consultation because most pharmacists now have a cons consult consultation room and, and, and also offer you remedies and so on. Um, and the next thing is 111. When in doubt, if there's something wrong, use 111 either by telephone or online. Increasingly, uh, people are using it online. And, and that's before you get to your GP. So this helps actually um, um, preserve a lot of uh, GP practice um, um, uh, resource, basically, if we can keep people away from their GP for good reason. I don't mean uh, they, they shouldn't go if they should go, but I think if we can keep them away for, uh, with, with alternatives, that's good. Um, and then obviously all the way up to um, the last thing you need to do, um, unless it's really urgent, is go to an A&E department. Um, not because we don't want you there, but you have to have a good reason to be there. You've got to be seriously ill to go to A&E, uh, particularly um, as walk-ins. Um, obviously, if you're going by ambulance, well, don't they, someone else has made that decision for you. Um, this is all leading up to what is the primary um, – well, the two – and I'll just talk flu first before we go back to uh, 111. Flu – again is is really significant in, in this year it's always significant but more so and because of the covid issue we've all we've, we've seen unprecedented demand about 140 percent demand compared to this time last year for flu um that doesn't mean to say we're trying to stop people in, by on the contrary we're trying to encourage people to come and have a flu jab we are at the moment and I, this is real time we are looking at the uh, 65 plus the most vulnerable groups that's those um, um in the BAME community or they've got learning difficulties or they are in the shielding category all those types um, and incidentally if, if, if those that are being who's in their household that can we actually look at and, and 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 to some extent the whole flu campaign this year um is rehearsing for when we do have a, a covid uh, um, vaccination in other words when we've got a some something which we can offer to actually prevent covid um I'm, uh, and i'm not in a position i can't i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist i can't tell you when that will be the latest news is it's not going to be before christmas 
it's probably unlikely before the new year anyway. So I think um, what we're saying is 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 as is, is we're planning. Let's get all the groups that need to be um, uh, inoculated done as soon as we can, and that is happening. I think um, our colleagues here tonight, their practices are already doing this. Um, we are, we are, it's, the demand is so good and it, the business is so brisk that we're running out of vaccine, but more vaccine is on the way. That, you know, that's not a panic statement, that is a fact. Um, the, the, uh, you can go to your pharmacist for flu. Um, your pharmacist, pharmacist will also offer you a flu jab generally, um, and there are fees of, uh, affected by that. But if that's that's convenient for you, we're not talking about robbing the bank to do that, but your pharmacist can help. And that also alleviates the pressure on your, your, your local GP practice as well. But again, if you're in those groups, the vulnerable groups, flu vaccines are free. Um, the other thing is um, with flu is um, the government have decided that all 50 to 64 year olds will also have a flu vaccine this year not until november december so don't go rushing away straight away because you'll be refused and we don't want you to be upset because you've been refused a jab um we um we we know that the current go cohorts which i say 65 plus and vulnerable groups and so on the vaccines are being made available now but for the next the next cohort the um, 50 plus group, um, we won't have vaccines available probably till November at the earliest, possibly December. But that will be when, and there will be, there will be com communication, publicity associated with that. So wait for the starter's pistol to go off um, uh, before you rush off if you're under the age of 65. So, um, but flu, flu is a big deal. Um, we have um, um, a CCG, well, it's not just CCG now, it's a system-wide flu group. Um, we've had that today. We, we, we meet to look at progress weekly. And today we brought all our main providers in. So we had the three hospitals and the community service CWP all in the same room. It wasn't actually face to face. It wasn't just like this. It was on teams. But at the end of the day, um, that it's a very positive group. Lots of positive um, reaction. We have the local authorities involved uh, and so on, because obviously they're involved with schools, with care homes. All those different cohorts are being examined in close detail um, and again, and prioritised uh, um, accordingly. So that kind of leads me on to the single biggest new initiative um, for winter this year, which is Think 111 First. And thank you. Yes, I'm getting the slide up. Now, this is um, 111 is not new, and many of you will know and probably have used it in the past. And this is a, a basically um, um, a service which you can ring. Um, generally speaking, about 20% of callers get um, uh, referred to self-care or their pharmacist, but 80% go through what is called an algorithm. It's called Pathways. And, and at the end of that, you're given a disposition and that disposition will, will give you um, the opportunity to go and see a particular uh, uh, most appropriate service provider. That might be your GP. In fact, the majority are your GP and that will be prioritised by is it urgent? you to go two hours or is it less urgent six hours or it could be a day or it could be a week whatever that is but also it could be into gp out of hours if it's if it's out of hours or it could be to a community service or indeed an acute service so so 111 has and it works through a directory of services and and the ccg owns that directory of services and develops it all the time now the difference with 111 first is fairly um, new territory for the acute sector, for the hospitals, because it involves the A&E department. And the idea is um, we, we, um, you go through the pathways algorithm and if you're, you're given a disposition which is A&E, which um, is, is part of the, part of the uh, alternatives that are there, um, we then put you through what is a clinical assessment uh, um, and that clinical assessment would determine whether you really need to go to A&E, in which case you will be booked into your local A&E department. In other words, you'll get a formal booking, um, which that's the unprecedented part. But if you don't need to go to A&E, you will be referred into 
a, a more appropriate service and again directly booked into that so that could be again could be gp out of hours or it could be a community service or it could be uh, it could be a secondary like um, for example a respiratory clinic which is part of the hospital but not fire a and e you go directly to where you need to go uh, and that's basically what um what the, the 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 idea is so this is actually quite um it's quite a difficult thing to achieve because it's quite a culture shock for a and e departments as you can imagine they're not used to taking bookings they're not a hotel <laughs> and they're not a, a gp practice either they're not used to taking making appointments but uh, what i'd like to say is locally we have three systems we have um, east cheshire trust we have mid cheshire trust and we have west cheshire each of those um, hospital trusts have, have embraced this opportunity with open arms and i think that's a really positive way forward because this is the way forward for the health service in terms of access to it it's about integration um, but i'll come back to that i think the idea that we we can start to directly book patients directly into an a and e department is actually a fundamentally new idea i mean it's not completely new because i'm gp practices will tell you with the event of e-referral i was involved with choose and book when we started electronic referrals from practice into outpatient departments and that was a real culture shock as well because i was part of it and i know i know the difficulties involved so this this involves um as I say, they're, they're, they're embracing the opportunity, which is great, um, but it, it's not as simple as it sounds. We have to worry about the IT, the making it happen because it's all electronic um, and all that. We have to make sure that the right clinical type um, um, dino, uh, diagnostics, et cetera, are, 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 are put in the system so that the assessments are clinically accurate and and therefore the referral goes to the right place for you and that that's that's quite a tricky thing to achieve remotely um not least when there aren't that many doctors about <laughs> so i think we 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 have a, a, a um a quite a challenge on our hands but it's all being managed the the next thing i should tell you is it's imminent um, um the national go live is the 1st of December and there will be publicity. Um, I'm not promising you the center break of Coronation Street, um, but there will be publicity. Um, certainly a lot of uh, 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 above the line um, advertising plus social media associated with it. But locally, um, uh, East Cheshire will go on the 24th of November alongside West Cheshire. But the, our fast follower group, which is Mid Cheshire, will go live on the 10th. Now, the idea that they go live before the launch date is so that they can have a shakedown period to make sure everything is working perfectly. The IT is working. The, the clinical assessment is working. All of those things need to be be really sound before we go live um, and, and it's quite a modest start there won't be any big publicity until December what we call a soft launch uh, that's what will happen and um, many of these um, I think um, uh, uh, issues will be ironed out before the, the national launch and this is just phase one and the important thing to think about is that using one one either by phone or by online approach um, it is something you can do from home. You, the clinical assessment is, is done while you're still at home. And eventually, if you do need to go and see a doctor, whether that's a GP or whether that's in secondary care or in community, wherever that might be, that you go to the right place first time. And that's really the most important thing. Um, and that's what this is all about. There will be an opportunity for feedback. So again, I'll probably come back again when, when this is up and, and running because I want feedback. Um, we all want feedback. We want to know how patients, um, I was going to say endured the service. So that's not quite the right expression, but I think how they uh, fared with the service, their, 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 their impressions of it, how it could be improved. We're very interested in, in, in that. And we're very keen to make sure that uh, it doesn't prejudice any difficult uh, hard to reach group so different language groups for example different um, uh, ethnic uh, ethnicities uh, all those kind of areas um, we want to make sure that the whole thing is done um, in, an, in an equitable way um, so i think this is the direction of travel and i think you'll see this is as i say phase one 
um, we'll, as this gets or, or gets further developed, we'll be looking for an increasing number of different referral opportunities, particularly in secondary care. I mean, in the same way as uh, GPs can now refer into different outpatient departments, we want you via 11 to be able to be referred, if you need to be referred, directly into the clinics that you need. That's exactly what this is about. And your records and your assessment, clinical assessment, will proceed you electronically. So that's effectively what the, the whole process is about. And the direct booking uh, thing, we know already um, where direct booking is made available, and that is made available still. GP practices have direct booking already. We used to have it uh, briefly in, in GP out of hours, and that's going to come back shortly. Um, Patients, we know the feedback is they like it because if they can make one phone call. It could be a few minutes, go through the algorithm, get a get a disposition, get a reference, uh, a referral, uh, get an appointment, and that's a very neat solution. And people like it, um, and it's pretty reliable. Believe me, the one thing that we have, to, and I'll leave you with this thought in terms of my little talk, is that safety of the patient is paramount, which does mean that sometimes. It, it may be a little bit uh, bureaucratic or we're, we're a little bit risk averse, but that's better than being dangerous to patients. And that's that's always the first thing that we have in our mind. Um, I just um, uh, just relate it back to the ambulance service. Um, the director of services, which is what facilitates this, is a kind of backroom function. We can only work with the director of services. Um, also feeds into uh, into paramedic cabs, the, the cab in the um, ambulance. They have something which is called Service Finder, and that takes the same feed as the directory of services. So paramedics, when they're with a, a patient, can also use the same directory. And again, that is about getting the patient to the right place first time and not having to like, take them to A&E unless they really need it. Now, on that note, I'll, I'll just stop and if there are any questions. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Jim. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the clock and thinking we're kind of running out of time. I, I, I can obviously, obviously offer more time for, for everybody on the call tonight, but um, it, it's as long as, 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 as our community wants to stay on for. Katie, is there a, was there a promise of a video? Is that going to happen? Uh, yeah, we can uh, show it as a video featuring your good self, Dr. McKelvey, talking about flu. Would you like to show that now? Would you like to take some NHS 111 first questions? Well, I thought we'd show the video to give other, other people time to actually ask some questions too. So if you put the video on and then we'll start asking questions. Okay. Flu is a nasty virus and kills thousands of people every year. That's why I'm having my free flu jab and encouraging patients to do the same. Visit www.nhs.uk and find out if you're eligible for a free vaccine. I wonder whether we've got some IT issues there, Katie. Uh, no, it, it will have shown for everyone that's watching, probably not for yourself as a panellist. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, oh, I, I saw it. Did you? <laughs> it's just my PC then, and I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> so, no, I didn't see it, but I did it, so I should know about the message, shouldn't I? So, Katie, voice in the sky, are there any questions for Jim? There are so many questions that we've had this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure to see all of the comments. Um, just to reiterate, if we don't get to ask your question this evening, we are going to collate them all and get a genuine response and we'll share with you within a week. Um, but quickly for Jim, uh, we've had a comment that says NHS 111 first, brilliant. Um, as long as walk-ins don't disrupt the booked time for those that have used 111. Uh, that isn't what I thought was going to be asked, actually, because we have heard a rumour that we're closing A&E departments to walk-ins. That's not true. Let me just make that very clear. Walk-ins will be treated um, um, just as fairly. Each of the um, hospitals uh, are on our on our watch um, um, will have to have um, what we call um, a, 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 a service operation 
approach which actually deals with both those that walk in without coming via 111 and those that are actually are booked in via 111 um that that's that's something and part of the deal so they they had they already have thought that this is going to be an issue and they are all having to deal with it and they'll all have to explain uh, before they go live exactly how they're going to do it um but but that is very much um in their minds um there is another issue associated with that and that is um the, the booking slots which are made available in A and E's, if they run out, what happens with that? And we've got a we've got a, um, a standard operating procedure that will actually um, deal with that too. So so all of those things um, which are very important if you're the patient that is involved with it are being thought about. Can I quickly jump in with this as well, just because I did work for the GP out of hours at Lincoln Hospital for a very long time, and we went from just having booked appointments where people rang up. Um, they'd ring up 111 now and be told they need a GP out of hours appointment and came to us. Um, and then we started, um, now we work very closely with our A&E colleagues and they will bring round patients that they have seen in A&E and think that we can help. Um, and actually, um, it was always, you were always, always seen much quicker if you'd gone the right route and rung up 111 and got a proper appointment with us. So we couldn't always keep completely to time, just like a normal GP surgeries, you can't sadly always keep completely to time. But you got seen much, much quicker than people who actually turned up to A&E with the problem that a GP yeah. could have dealt with, as an example. So A&E are going to need to do a very similar thing and hopefully they can learn from how the GP out of hours manage this. That if you need to get seen, you and if you come in and walk in and somebody needs to see you, you will see that person, but you are likely to wait a lot longer than if you'd gone through the 111 first route and got directed to the right person straight away and got on an appointment. And that's right, isn't it, Jim? So it's it is. Same this this is about. Um... We're, we're trying. I mean, this is the first try at trying to. Um, I think change patient behavior you know for people that go to a and each change behavior to think twice about just getting in the car or whatever going is that this is a much easier and safer way of doing it and it's much more reliable because you'll have an appointment at the end of it so why why just be go on spec but anyway people on spec will not be turned away but there will be as an operating procedure which will manage them which will be slightly different from those that have already booked into slots any more, Katie? Thank you. That aligns, as I said, we've had loads. That aligns to another question um, from an operational point of view. Um, so uh, in terms of the walk-in, uh, so say someone walks in, they don't require A&E, um, the triage nurse, will they be able to then uh, make an appointment or a booking for a later time or direct the patient to other services? Um well, no, I don't think if it's quite. I think it's a bit simpler than that. I mean, obviously, um, you'll get your slot, and that'll that'll tell. You. Then the the acute service takes over because they will give you a thorough assessment, and they'll determine what your next step is. Um, so it, it's unnecessary, really. Um, if you if you if you've already had an assessment via one one one, which has put you into an A and E direct booking slot, then uh, hopefully you do need to go. I mean, obviously there may be a, a few, which a uh, fortunate few, if you like, that don't, that have been sent and don't need to be there, but the majority by far will be, um, there'll be, it'll be a necessary first port of call. But then essentially the acute, the secondary care will take over and they'll determine what your next steps are. And another Katie? Uh there are lots. So there's um, a question. If we just take this as the last question, conscious of time, um, there's a question on the kind of geography. Um, and I think this is on the east of the patch. Um, if you contact NHS 111 first and they recommend you do go to A&E, can you select your A&E? Would you be able to go, for example, to Stepping Hill rather than Macclesfield? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, the answer is um, y yes, you can say that, but you would need to make sure that you made that clear that that's your preference. But they could they could certainly send it. I mean, it, it, um, East Cheshire Trust has a very strong relationship with Stepping Hill anyway. Funny, I've been talking about that today uh, with them. Um, so so it wouldn't be any great surprise to receive patients, um, but that would have to be um, um, arranged. Um, and and there's no reason why it couldn't be because the direct booking would go via 
the um, the, the 111 service directly into, into Stepping Hill um, and would bypass um, the East Cheshire altogether. Um, um, the records of that would go back to their registered GP or rather GP where they're registered. Thanks, Jim. And one final comment. Fantastic webinar. Thanks so much to the speakers. Lots of great information. Thank you. All right. Thank you. My word. They're my final comments as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, fabulous. Thank you for the comment. That was lovely. Really nice. Um, uh, and I, I, can I just thank uh, Sinead and Jim as well? A really great webinar. Um, really great insight from Sinead and Jim, all the planning that you've got to do for these uh, within our winter plan. It takes days and days and weeks and weeks of planning. So thank you and your team for all the work that you've done and are still doing. So and hopefully the implementation will be as smooth as it possibly can be. And can I just thank you. No problem. Can I just thank you as well, the community? Um, it's great to have you involved. I don't quite know how an hour and in an hour and seven minutes we can get through primary care update and the 111 and flu program. But um, we have got a lot of questions. It's great that you're so interested. We will promise to get back to each and every one of you. Um, there might be some themes coming through that we can answer in that way, but we will endeavour to get through all of these, as Katie says, within the week. Which leads me to thank the panelists, thank Katie, voice in the in the sky, thank everyone for actually arranging the webinars, and uh, we'll see you again, I'm sure, very very soon. So, good evening, and stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. Good night.